So I'm told we have back the public relations officer of University of Calabar Cross River State, Mr. Epiang Eyo. Good morning, sir. Are you still there with us? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sir. If I can get some volume, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, sir. Um, so, Professor uh, uh, Cliff, um, let me forget his, his full name, um, in the form is obviously the focus this morning because of the allegations of um, um, this sex for marks that we've always talked about for many years. I'd like you to give us a direct update from the school concerning the protests that happened yesterday. Actually, yesterday morning, we had a, a group of students from the law faculty of the institution they came around chanting, and they had several placards in their possession, and they said they wanted to see the vice chancellor. And at the time that they came, the vice chancellor was already in a meeting with other management staff alongside um, faculty, academic faculty members of the law faculty. And then um, since they came, they chanted, they were raising their voices, and we could see on the placards that they had genuine concern. The leadership of the body, that is the law, the law student association of Nigeria, the leaders were invited to see the vice council and management in the session. And when they got there, they raised a lot of issues which was behind their coming to see the vice chancellor. Issues such as uh, what has been going on now, the sexual concern. So that wasn't actually the primary, it was one alongside. There are also issues of accountability and then leadership issues in coming up in various forms. And they said it has affected them, affected the running of losses, and even the operations that students in the faculty, and that they will want management to address those issues as it were. Okay. And the Vice Chancellor on behalf of management, since he gave them really a good um, number of minutes and hours this week, listened to them and thanked them for coming to lay their position before management and promised them right there that she would and I think look into all the issues concerned. And at the end of the day, we'll get back to the students. The students, the leadership, they were very satisfied. And she even walked down from there, came down and addressed the other students who were on the classroom and told them that she would definitely address these issues. Okay. And we'll get back. Okay, the issues. All right. Get the issues to that. That's what, yes. What were the issues? And that, and that let, let me tell you, add on a little bit. The meeting dragged on. The, when they left, the last meeting between management and the staff of the faculty continued. It went very late beyond even official hours. So by today, before the end of the day, a statement will be officially issued. Okay. Okay. Be before we wait for the, while we're waiting for the statement to be officially re um, re released. released, there's a question that many people have on Twitter, especially after this, this information broke, that why was he reinstated? Like, there was this issue in 2016, and he was suspended until found not guilty. And even though the case was dismissed, the situ it wasn't a case of not guilty, it was a dismissed case. Why was he reinstated, and has there been other reports about this thing since then? Well, I can answer that question to the level that I can. Now, you remember that the, the vice chancellor, the, the sitting vice chancellor, got him suspended from office. Mm -hmm. I told him you cannot stay here in the university. Okay. When you have a matter before the court, you need to go out there, clear your name, clear yourself, before you can even return okay. Okay. to perform any academic function. And so for that period of time, he was away. Some other person took over and went on. But the issue was that by the time he went there, cleared himself and came back. And when he came back, another vice chancellor was on the, on the side. 
But his coming back was not that. It was not management that we took him. His coming back was purely the faculty concern. It is not the vice chancellor that appoints him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because he appoints him. He are elected, not by the vice chancellor, but by their faculty member. Okay. Okay, so I it guess... It's the fact that he takes that responsibility for his coming back and whatever role he was playing. Okay. Okay, so to I when... Yes, Mr. So if he's... If someone had gone through the... If someone has a court case, let's say, or someone has been accused of something like this, um, is it okay to just say, well, he's not appointed by, or he was not, um, he was appointed by the faculty members? Isn't there some sort of auditing, vetting that you do on the character of the sort of people that come into the university to work? You know, since also in this particular case, it was dismissed and not that he was found not guilty. Didn't the university find the need to do some in-house investigation on their own to make sure that the person that they were accepting was, you know, above board? No, no. You know that as you should stand that up that way. Especially yeah, under this it's not so clear. But the fact that he wasn't deceived. He wasn't deceived. And he went to work. That permission for Nigeria to be there to be very good. Let me use that word. Thank you, Mr. George. I can hardly hear you. It's quite muffled. I would really have loved to hear that. I think he said, I love Can you hear me now? It's a bit so well. Yeah, go ahead. That is what I mean. Yes. Yes, he went to court. Do you want to be caught? How do you mean he caught? He came back also. And he came back. He said, he came back. And he reported that he went to court. And he had killed himself. And was permitted to go back, not necessarily to his office as this, but to teach. This is very clear because he looked up to the court. If the court had said no, no, you were you were not right, no, you had issues, the court itself wouldn't have given the case in his favor. And we look also the court. And so we can be only allowed to do the teaching and the research things. But along the line to a time came again for election of these. And it was like I said, it is the faculty staff who determines who lives there. Are we together? It is the faculty who determines who lives there. Okay. We we'll have with us our guest. Mr. Efinger, are you still there? I'm still there. All right, still so there. let me get one more question for you. Go ahead, Toby. Okay, so my question is how did the university management handle this news? especially when you saw that the protest was now outside the four walls of the university? I don't want to come, I don't know how to say how to get to around it, but as, like I told you, earlier, like I said earlier, mm. management was already on the matter okay. when the students came here today. Okay. And the students okay. were invited in. What the students said had to shed much light and whatever ever information that has come to me. So as at yesterday, management had a full time after the brief of the student, had a full time of the student, had full knowledge, and had other information, even beyond who is out there, divulged to them right there. As I see, management I told us management met yesterday, and that meeting dragged on for a long time beyond even official hours. So management met. Not even they were all there, and at that meeting, the decision definitely has to be. Like I said today, before the end of the day, those decisions will be read out to the public. All right. Okay. So the, the phone was initially uh, muffled. We didn't hear what you said earlier. So I'm going to. There's another question that I would like you to. Yes, I just wanted to also confirm again because earlier when you were speaking, I didn't quite get it. Are you saying that before the protest came, I mean before they gathered for the protest, management was already sitting on the matter? This particular matter that the children were protesting against? Awful. Over the weekend, let me be precise. Over the weekend, the law faculty president, because we gathered that from them, had already sent a message okay. to the vice president that they would like to see her. So they came on the strength of that invitation. They had sent him and told them, please come. And since he was also aware, that they had hesitations against 
the the faculty as well, especially the dean. Yeah. We also invited them to come to the meeting. So the meeting was already on the student page. Okay, come in now. Okay. We're having this meeting. Come and just put your petition on this. Okay, going back to the issue of the faculty hiring or we're hiring, let me be sure I understand you. Because back in 2015, there was an allegation of rape against this same professor by a family saying that he raped their daughter. And remember that your school, the Uni Unical, also had suspended this same professor for various reasons. You said that uh, including tearing of the test script of the, uh, of the girl mm -hmm. under very suspicious circumstances, relocating the test venue of the, of the female student to his private office under the guise of getting her to recopy re a test script. He had earlier torn an allegation of sexual uh, assault and rape against him. So this man, you, your school suspended him. Now, it's 2023. This was back in 2016. How in the world is he still working in Unical? I think I responded to that. Please help us. I didn't, I didn't get the I question. Know, I know the nation where you say that the judiciary is the hope of the common man. He was suspended by the very university he worked in. And the university said, go to this court, go to court and clear your name because you've already been accused before a law court. You cannot continue to pray here in the office you are until you clear your name. Okay. That's the extent which the university had went at that time. And he went to court. For all that period of time, he wasn't teaching, he wasn't even in research. Okay. He was out there. And as we say, for the now, unfortunately, he went through the court process. And eventually he won. And the court cleared him. The Nigerian court cleared him. And cleared him and he came back to the university and said, Look, yes, I was suspended. Yes, and because of so and so and litigation, I have gone there to the court to show that. I've gone through. I know what you said about me. It's a court, not about all. Okay. He never went to the court. Yeah. And he never proceeded to the court. In two weeks, this man would have been used to it. But the court has said this. I mean, the court has said this man has not done anything. Well, there has been. Because an institution comes to the you cannot do. You know, okay, we, 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 so we I understand that, Mr. F. Young. That is, that is very clear okay. now. I didn't hear it earlier. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, in that so, situation, what lessons did Unical learn from that entire experience to put measures in place to ensure this doesn't reoccur, even if it ever, because that case was dismissed. As, as Maram said, it wasn't found guilty or not guilty, it was just dismissed. Mm -hmm. So what measures did your school put in place to protect the, cho the, the students from something like this, even remotely re reoccurring? Let me tell you one good thing about this current administration. You know, a woman is on the target. And as I speak to you, we also have a center for gender development. They are very, very conscious about the Delta. Very conscious about what happens to the female students we have and students generally. So ever since this vice chancellor came in, such things are not even for those. No, welcome. And let me say to Jim that that thing at that time was only peculiar to the law faculty. And I told her the circumstance to which uh, he came through. But he won't find that reported in any faculty. And again, because of again, the, the disposition of the vice chancellor, because he's been telling the students if there is any case of this magnitude, please voice out, speak out. And that was what empowered the students. We have situations like that in other things where students will just be quiet and quiet and people continue to mistreat them and do what they like with them. But she told them, speak out. And that same thing she came in, I must confess, students have been speaking out, not just on this issue, on several, on ethical issues. Okay. Students have been speaking out. And when they dare to speak out, she goes on like that to take decisions like we are saying. And we are about to see again in this one of today. Okay. That's fair enough. Any other questions? Yes, I was just going to ask if before management heard this at the weekend, has there been any reports about his behavior? Did you people hear anything? Did anyone ever report just as an individual before it, you heard at the weekend and before it escalated into a protest? This is a 
formally, I would say no. Formally, you would say no. Not formally. Not yes, formally. but you had heard. Okay. okay. All right. Not even this. It was just that today I started. After that, I heard other issues. Okay. All right. If my office had even heard that order, we would have been able to make it. Okay. So, Go ahead. So the other thing about this whole situation, and we've heard it over time, is that those people that are supposed to protect um, our children are the ones that expose them to situations like this. So my question would be, for instance, has there been a case where a lecturer was withdrawn from classroom and taken maybe to the office? Because I know that a university system has both academic and non-academic staff without taking his job off him, you know, just to reduce things like this from happening? I guess maybe you, maybe you never really actually read, maybe there are so many news on the, making the headlines. Under this administration, I know that about two interviews or so have been relieved of the appointment. I know that. And there is that constant warning and reminder that anyone who fails to live up to expectation will definitely be dealt with. And we have some of the relief of the appointment, as we told you. So if there's, there's no secret cow here. There's no secret cow. If there's okay. a precedent already set before now under this administration. All right. Thank we you. Told you the already all aware. Let me let you go because uh, I know you have to prepare for the uh, press release. Your, your school plans to release later on today. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Efion, for um, joining us on the show this morning. And, the, and your presence here shows that Unica obviously is not going to take this laying low. So we appreciate your, your, your thoughts on this this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, so we have to wrap up. But, um, I mean, I know it's, it's good not to judge people. But when a case of a sexual allegation against a child and the case is dismissed, I mean, I don't know for me, I would have loved to have cameras put in classrooms or something. I know to, what you mean. You know, yeah. just th this is a grave offense. It's something that you think that it's not something that you stole something and it was dismissed. Oh, you can't prove that you stole something. This is somebody being allegedly raped. raped. <laughs> so, so, so even though the court says it's dismissed, but I've got to make sure I protect my kids. Yeah. So we know there's justice system. You yeah. know how you know how someone gets away because some... Technicalities. Yes, technicalities, evidence. But you and I know that this is a possibility yeah. that could have happened. So, yes, I was hoping to hear that, you know, we put this in place. We made sure that you no, but don't you said see... that the new Wait, president admission are doing Yeah, we made sure that students don't visit lecturers beyond this time. We make sure that it's an open plan office so everybody yeah. sees everybody. You know, yeah. those sort of things. Those are a lot of things that yeah. actually make things uh, better. But we'll, we'll wait for their response, official response later today and see how that goes. Yeah. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we move on to another hot topic. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.